Welcome friends to my TRD skid plate installation video. However, there's one big difference. This is not the OEM Toyota TRD skid plate. This one comes from a company called Car Trim Home or CTH for short. And shout out to them because they're the ones who sent me the skid plate so I can make this video. I just wanted to throw that out there for full transparency sake. But yeah, when I purchased my 2024 SR5 Premium 4x4, it came with literally every option and every accessory that I wanted except for the skid plate, which was fine because I knew that was a easy fix. My original plan was to just order the OEM one. However, I'm glad I did my research before pulling the trigger because that's when I found out about this company and their skid plate that they offer because there's a couple of great differences between this and the OEM one. Number one, it's that oil filter panel. We have four little bolts that you can take off and you can easily access the oil filter when doing an oil change. That is brilliant. I love these kind of OEM plus type of products where they look OEM, but they make improvements and additions to it. So I love the little panel that they have incorporated here. Otherwise, everything else remains the same for the most part, right? Like you still have the same cooling cutouts that that has not changed. Your bolts go in the same place. The other changes are going to be with the colors. As you can see, you can choose between a silver skid plate and a black powder coated skid plate. That's awesome for people who want, again, that OEM plus look that's just a little bit different, right? So if you have a blacked out vehicle, you can get that black skid plate if that's the look you're going for. And you can also get black TRD letters. And that's something I personally opted for on their website. They charge an extra $15 for that. So I went with the classic silver skid plate because although my vehicle is finished in underground, I do like that contrast silver skid plate. It's just a classic Toyota look. So I went for that with the black letters. For me, they sent me the black letters separately and it showed up in my mailbox. But for others, I've seen that they just get the two letters in the same box as a skid plate itself. But I just wanted to throw that out there. The skid plate came to me rather early, came in like five or six days, I believe. With FedEx, they have a warehouse here in California. So shipping was not too bad. So yeah, those are some of the main reasons why you purchase the Car Trim Home skid plate over the OEM one. Also, the owner of Car Trim Home has a YouTube channel called King Sev. I'll have it linked in the description box below. And he also did an installation video, but he took out a caliper measuring tool and he measured the thickness between the OEM skid plate and the Car Trim Home one, his own skid plate, right? So when he measured it, the OEM skid plate was 6.58 millimeters. Toyota advertises that their skid plate is a quarter inch in terms of thickness. It's made completely from aluminum, so a quarter inch of aluminum. The CTH skid plate was 5.34 millimeters. So if we convert that into inches, the OEM skid plate ended up being a little bit over a quarter inch thickness. It was 0.259 inches, all right? Whereas the CTH skid plate comes out to approximately 0.21 inches. So a little bit under a quarter inches, but that's honestly fine. This purchase is primarily for vanity sake anyway. So I kind of prefer the slightly thinner aluminum skid plate that CTH has to offer because it's gonna be a little bit more lighter weight, a little bit easier to install as well. But I did want to point out that difference and I appreciate King Sev for pointing out that difference in his video. All right, let's get into the install now. Okay, the installation process is an absolute breeze, but I did forget to mention one other reason for considering this skid plate, and that's because we actually have two different instructions here. One for the people with KDSS and one for people without KDSS. So I have an SR5 Premium. I do not have KDSS on my vehicle, but this is great because you cannot buy this OEM skid plate from Toyota because it won't line up properly if you have KDSS. But now with CTH, you can get the skid plate for models with KDSS because the sides are cut out. So now it'll clear and you can install this TRD looking skid plate on a KDSS vehicle. That's another big reason for going with this brand. All right. This is a super simple process. I'm not even mechanically inclined, but even I was able to do this. 
First, we have to remove the plastic panel. Apparently some people don't have this, but I did. It's just held together with six different bolts. Use a 10 millimeter socket and you're good to go. You can use an impact wrench to remove these bolts. That's perfectly fine, but if you wanna break it open first with the socket wrench, that's also cool. So remove those six bolts and you're good to go. That plastic panel will be off. Now we get to the OEM metal skid plate. That's held together with four screws, all right? So again, just remove that. I would start out with the back first because we also have a kind of a clip where this metal skid plate kind of holds onto. So remove the back two first, place your hand over the skid plate, remove the front two, then it'll just swing out, all right? A lot of people, they actually put their vehicle on a subtle lift first before removing this, but I was able to clear this in my driveway, no problem. I didn't have to lift the vehicle, put it on jacks, none of that. Moving on, this is where the difference comes in for KDSS versus non-KDSS, all right? I'm sure everyone has noticed these metal brackets. A lot of people are afraid to remove them because it is part of your frame, right? But if you have KDSS, you have no choice. You do have to remove these two braces. Some people say that there's four bolts. Others say that there's six. For me, I had six different bolts for these two braces. Actually, this back picture shows it a lot better. So as you can see, one, two, three. The ones labeled B, that's your kind of your third or your sixth bolts, all right? And that's exactly what I had. But regardless of the amount of bolts, you do have to remove this for the KDSS skid plate to clear. Not to worry though, because your new skid plate is going to utilize essentially these bolts. So, you know, you still have stability. It's still supported, but instead of using these braces, your new CTH skid plate is going to be supporting your vehicle and it's gonna be bolted to the frame instead. All right, so that's KDSS. Moving on, this is for people like me with an SR5. The instructions are going to be a little bit different. So you know how I mentioned that we have six bolts here, at least that's what I have on my 2024 Forerunner. Apparently throughout the years, they made some subtle tweaks and changes between 2014 to 2024. Majority of those subtle changes happened in 2020. So just so you're aware, like for instance, I have that plastic panel and I have six bolts for these two frame supports. All right. Let me tell you how this is gonna work out. You are going to remove the first two bolts on this frame support, all right? You're gonna leave the third ones in, okay? The ones labeled B all the way in the back, you leave that in for the non-KDSS models. Now what's going to happen is this new CTH skid plate for models like what I have, the SR5s, this skid plate is going to bolt on to these two bolts right here. All right, so we're gonna keep these braces and we're going to install this skid plate using the first two bolts. So in the box of the CTH skid plate, you're going to get a bag of bolts. The only ones you need to utilize is the ones for the front. So you're gonna see that there's a big hole there. A sleeve is going to go into that hole. So you're gonna have a longer screw. The longer screw is going to go in the front. The shorter screw goes in the back. I'll talk about the shorter screw in a little bit, but the ones in the front, you're gonna use the screw. You're gonna put the spacer in there. Then the sleeve is gonna go on top of that spacer. Then you have an additional plastic washer as well. I'm sorry, the first item that I called a spacer, that's also a washer. So the metal washer goes on the bottom, then the thick metal sleeve goes next, and then you have the plastic washer that goes on top of the sleeve. And that plastic washer is there to prevent rattles. So that's what you bolt up top here. Then in the back, Car Trim Home did give you new bolts to use in the back, right? 
However, I did not use them. So these bolts that came OEM with these braces, that's what we used in the rear to install this skid plate. And let me show you why. All right. This is the car trim home bolt that I was supposed to use for that back, all right? I didn't use this because my father told me about this. He said that this is a pretty cheap screw actually. It's made completely of just regular metal and this is pretty much prone to rusting and it's not a quality screw because this is the OEM Toyota screw. This is what came out from the back here. I just reused these screws. There is a difference. This is more of like a galvanized bolt, so it's not prone to rusting. And also you can notice here, my father showed me this, there's kind of a taper here towards, towards the top. It's subtle, but it is there. This is just a straight bolt, and this is easy to strip, so you really have to align this properly to make sure it doesn't strip. So it's wise to not use like an impact wrench or something when you tighten up these bolts. I would just hand tighten everything to the best of your ability. The ones in the back, since you're using these OEM uh, Toyota bolts, you can kind of use the impact wrench to tighten up in the rear, but it's not really necessary. Just using the socket wrench, hand tightening it to the best of your ability is perfectly fine. But this is a superior screw. Uh, a lot of people, they don't even bother with any of this. They just go to Home Depot, get a new set, or they buy separately just the OEM Toyota bolts like instead of buying the entire OEM skid plate from Toyota They'll just buy the bolts and use that To bolt on with the car trim home skid plate. You can do it. However you want I ended up using the bolts that CTH gave me for the front Okay with their sleeve with that plastic washer on the top. I used all of that up top here But just make sure that you're lining it up properly. All right, otherwise this is a super simple install, no issues at all. It literally took me less than 30 minutes to install this. And obviously this just sticks on, you have double-sided tape, you just remove that, peel it back, and you have these plastic clips that help you to line up the letters so you're not gonna screw it up. It's not perfectly aligned, right? Like the whole cutouts for those, uh, for those plastic clips, it's not perfect, but it goes underneath the vehicle. Nobody's going to notice. I just thought I would mention that the alignment of these letters and these pretty cheap bolts that they give you, that's the only two cons I've noticed with this um, skid plate. Otherwise, everything else is absolutely phenomenal. When you hold and touch this skid plate, it feels like a proper high quality product. And yeah, it really completes the look of my 4Runner. Looks amazing. And I appreciate the black letters as well. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. And also, if you want to save 7% off of any item that Car Trim Home sells on their website, you can use my discount code in the description box. But thank you so much for watching. Take care and goodbye.